Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to talk to you. Lord, we lift you up today because all power belongs to you. And as the pace of life has slowed down for most of us, we thank you that we can take the time to behold and appreciate your creation. We thank you for the ability to behold its beauty and to enjoy all the wonderful things that you have made. Dear God, we ask you at this time that you would remember the protests that are worldwide. We ask you, Lord, that you will let them remain peaceful. We pray that you will bless them, dear God, to be a catalyst that would bring about change. We pray for the families everywhere that have been affected by racial injustice. Those who have been bereaved and suffered loss, we ask you, dear God, that you would minister to their hurt and to their pain. We pray for healing to their hearts and that you would give them the strength that they need to go on each day. Your word said that you would never leave us comfortless. And so we ask you, Father, to comfort your people right now. We ask you to remember those who are anxious during these uncertain times. We pray, dear God, that you will give them peace. And for those who are not well within our communities and our churches and our families, we ask you, dear God, that you would bring healing to them right now. Give them the faith, Lord, to believe that you can do it. Give them the faith to know that you will. And even though we're not together in a particular building right now, we thank you, Lord, that your church continues. We thank you, Lord, that we can still come together and make our requests known to you. Because you're a good God. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God. And Lord, for those who are wondering at this time, do you exist? Are you real? We ask you, dear God, that you will make yourself known to them in a clear way so that they too can experience your unconditional love. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being with us. We pray that you'll continue to watch over us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading will be taken from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honour. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth.
Good morning and welcome to the Will and All Tabernacle Church mini service this morning. I just want to say a big thank you to each and everyone who's tuning in this morning. Uh, a massive thank you to all members and friends of our church. It's been three months now since or past three months now since we've been out of the church building but we are giving god thanks that we're still able to communicate with you on a sunday morning i just want to say a massive thank you to each and every one who has participated thus far in our services on a weekly basis and those who will be participating today i um, also want to say a massive shout out to glenn russell who has continued to put together these mini services every Sunday morning. And I know it's been taking a lot of your time, Glenn. So we just want to say a massive thank you for your ministry to you and to your family. Just want to say thank you in Jesus' precious name. This morning's service will um, have a little difference to it. We're having um, a guest speaker this morning. We're honoured to have with us the Reverend Hermeline James from the New Testament Church of God in Dudley, uh, a ministerial colleague and good friend of mine. And we will be blessed, I'm sure, as we hear what the mighty woman of God has to say to the church this morning. Praise God. Um, just a couple of notices before we get into our service. Just wanted to remind you that our Bible study will be continuing this Tuesday night at 7.30. Um, Reverend Max will be in charge. Um, we will send out all the details, the study materials, materials and times um, today sometime so that you will be able to look up uh, and to read up and to um, prepare yourselves for the teaching on Tuesday evening and also to remind you about the Zoom district service which will be tonight at 6 30. We are awaiting information in terms of um, tuning into that so hopefully those details will be coming to you very very shortly so god bless you as you listen today and receive the word of god from reverend james it's good to share fellowship with you today and i thank reverend maynard for his kind invitation for me to share the word I don't take it for granted, I'm just thankful to God that in this time of pandemic, this time of great difficulty, I'm alive, I'm well, and I'm giving God praise. I'm also very mindful of all who have suffered loss, the loss of their loved one, loved ones over the last few weeks. I'm going to share a word today from 2 Kings chapter 7, reading from verse 3 to verse 10. Now there were four lepers at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses the noise of a great army. So they said one to another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. Their tents, their horses and their donkeys and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came 
to the outskirts of the camp. They went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing. And when they and went and hid them, then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until the morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come. Let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, We went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied, and the tents intact. The topic today is the open door to fulfillment. Now, the story of the four lepers depicts people who were desperate for a change in their situation. These four men lived in a no man's land situation and they were so desperate that they were willing to try anything in order to survive the harshness of their plight. Their historical context was that the Syrian army had besieged Samaria, the city outside of which the lepers lived were not allowed to enter because they were ceremonially unclean. The lepers lived outside the city of Samaria and they weren't allowed to go in to the city because they were regarded as unclean. But then the Syrians had besieged that city. So you can see the plight of those four men who were lepers. They are who we would call the untouchables, the misfits, because of their disease, which was and which is very contagious. And if we should spiritualize leprosy, leprosy is a type of sin, but That's not our discussion today. Outside of the gate of the city was their place of residence. They were not allowed to go in that city. The people in the city were desperate too. Just like the lepers, they were desperate. They could not venture out due to the fact that the, the Syrians were waiting to attack and to kill them. And famine, as a result of the fact that they were besieged, famine had come to the city. Situation in the city was so dire that they resorted to eating anything available and even resorted to cannibalism cannibalism. It was in the midst of all that hopelessness and despair that the lepers began to view life from a new perspective. This new way of thinking led them to their open door, to the opportunity to escape from hunger and desperation. The lesson here is that we may not see our open door until we start viewing life from a new perspective. And I want to say to the church today and to God's people and to anyone listening, 
We need to start viewing life through new perspective, look through a new lens, have new eyesight, get new vision for our lives. What led them to their new way of thinking or to think differently? I have said it before, it was desperation. You know, when we are desperate, we will try anything to get a sense of relief or to get us out of the situation we are in. They were fully aware of the outcome of the situation if they did not do something. They said, why are we sitting here until we die? Those are words of desperate people. It is evident by the very telling question that they ask themselves. Why are we sitting here? You may be in a situation today that you may have to start speaking to yourself. Why am I still in this situation? Why am I sitting here? Why am I tolerating this? Because as long as you're willing to sit in one place, Without moving, your situation may not change. So when you know that the end game is not favorable, like those four leprous men, they knew the end game for them didn't look good. Then they decided to start weighing up the, the odds and then made a decision. The other thing I want to suggest is that they were willing to lose their lives just to enable them to experience something different. They were willing to lose their lives. They said to themselves, if we go into the camp of the Syrians, we are going to die. If we don't go down there, we are still going to die. They were willing to lose their lives. We've got to be willing to lose something in order to walk into the open door that God has for us. Sometimes we want to hold on to what we know because it's familiar, it's familiar territory. We want to stay where we are. But we've got to be willing to lose our lives. We've got to be willing to let go of something in order to experience the new things that God has for us. So the question can be asked today, what are we willing to lose to experience the fulfillment of God's promise to us? We can't stay around the familiar and expect anything to change. If you stay around the familiar, nothing will change. It may eventually change, but it may take a longer period. So my encouragement to us today is to be willing to lose something. You may have to lose a friend. You may have to lose, uh, sometimes we, we lose a lot of things. We lose credibility amongst people, as long as it's not for bad reasons. But we've got to be willing to lose something to enable us to experience something different. Those four lepers were risk takers. Originally, they were not living at a safe place. They just had, just about had enough protection. Just about had enough protection from those who were standing on those city walls and protecting the city of Samaria. Because uh, when invaders would approach, those on the wall would probably see them approaching. And then the, uh, the lepers would have been in the position to hear them crying out that invaders are coming. So they just about had enough protection. But now we see them being prepared to expose themselves to greater dangers. If we are going to experience the fulfill 
fulfillment of God in our lives, we got to be willing to take certain risks. I'm reminded of a woman in the scriptures who had a, a medical problem. This woman was hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging. And one day when Jesus came into her town, she took a risk got close enough to touch, to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that she received her healing. These four men were willing to take a risk. We've got to take a risk. Our open door may appear to lead us into greater danger but that's the risk we may have to take we have a tendency to hold on to what we know and is sometimes unwilling to think outside of the box which is the phrase that we hear on a regular basis but we may just have to be prepared to take a walk in the dark and to see what will happen. We'll have to take a leap of faith, a step of faith, because that's what these four lepers did. They took steps of faith. It could not have been easy for them to decide to walk towards the enemy's camp. But they decided to take that risk and it paid off. Take a step of faith today. Then they, ex they didn't only think about it. They executed their plan. Most of the time we think about things, but we're very reluctant to take action. They made their move at twilight, at sunset. Twilight also means a period or state of gradual decline you know sometimes we when things are going good for us that's when we we decide to make moves but when things are not going so good we need to also be resolute in our decisions to move things were going downhill but they weren't afraid of the darkness they used it as an opportunity to make a move. Things may be dark for you, but put your faith, put your trust, put your confidence in the Almighty God. That's what they did. They took leaps of faith in the twilight, in the sunset, in the darkness, sometimes it's in the dark moments of our lives that we should find the courage to act. When things get dark for most of us, we are prepared to sit down and die. It was dark for these guys, but they decided to get up and move. Don't allow the darkness to engulf us to the point where we can't function. They had a disability. They had leprosy. But they decided they were going to do something. They were going to move. The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They were willing to move towards their open door of fulfillment. Their moment of discovery came as they moved towards the camp of the enemy. At the outskirts of the camp, they had their surprise. They saw a deserted camp. They didn't have to fight for anything. They just stepped into their abundance. Most of the time, we feel we have to fight for something. We have to push other people aside. We have to pull other people down. But no, 
they took steps of faith and walked towards the camp of the enemy. And they were pleasantly surprised. No one was around. The enemy had disappeared because God made an open door for them. He saw their steps of faith and allowed them to walk into their abundance. The Bible says everything was intact. You may feel yourself surrounded by the enemy and feel that uh, you are not going to make headway in life. But take steps of faith and walk towards those doors that God will open for you. They found enough to house them. They found enough to transport them. They found enough to feed themselves. They found enough to clothe themselves. And they found enough to give them financial security because they found food, they found donkeys, they found money, they found clothing. They found enough. This suggests that when God opens your door, you won't find chaos and your need will be well taken care of. The Bible says they found everything intact. When God opens your door, you won't find chaos. You're going to find everything to meet your needs. So let me conclude by saying, everybody who lived in the city benefited from their discovery and blessings. Please note, that they could only go back to the gate as per usual to tell of the good news because there were still lepers. Not everybody will appreciate what God has done for you and pull you in to their circle. But never mind that. Just appreciate what God is doing in your life. They still have their scabs and was still contagious, but a door had opened for them that no one could close. Let me say today, when God gives you a favor and opens the door for you, nobody can shut it. Those of us who have been hurt by other people along our journey can learn a very valuable lesson from the lepers. Although they had the advantage, they didn't hold a grudge. They had the advantage, they knew where the food was. They didn't hold a grudge and deny the city. From the faith of, by walking, down to the Syrians camp and they were loving enough, gracious enough to go back to the city to tell the others. They made a conscious decision to not hold grudges. You know sometimes because of the grudges that we hold and we hold on to the past we cannot experience the fullness of joy in our hearts. That, and, and even the provision that God has given to us, we can't enjoy it because we are holding grudges. So even if people don't accept you, be generous enough in spirit to share your love. So when God opens your door, no one, can shut it. God is still opening doors. God is still providing. God is still making a way when there seems to be no way. Even like the Israelites whom he 
allowed Moses to stretch his rod and they crossed the Red Sea, God is still making ways. God made a way for those four lepers. He's made a way for others. And he's making a way for you. So God bless you. Be brave. Be strong. And walk in confidence. Knowing that God will meet your needs. And fulfill your desires that are in line with his will and purpose for your life. God bless you. God keep you. And may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.